Hey, this is David with Arabesque Music, and yes, it's finally here. The audio track, which is one of the most anticipated features, is now available in Guitar Pro 8. So what is that audio track and why do you need it? First of all, the audio track is gonna help you transcribe a song. Simply add the audio track to the project you're working on, synchronize it with your project, and you can now edit your score, making sure that everything matches the original source. The audio track also saves you tons of time during the editing process. See, in the past, when you wanted to edit a project, you had to use multiple software. One of them to listen to the original track, and then you had to go back to Guitar Pro, edit your score, go back to the original source to check your work. This is no longer the case. You can now do everything directly in GP8. The audio track also dramatically improves the sound of your tabs. For example, you can add the real recording of the voice, which adds tons of realism to your project. You can also use the audio track to practice. Just import a backing track in your project and make use of all the features built into GP8. The audio track is also awesome to share your knowledge. If you're a teacher, for example, you can add directly into your GP8 score some audio commentary. For this diminished ascending leg, you can use your index and your pinky. So I hear you asking, how do I use the audio track? It's very easy. Clicking on this waveform icon will open the audio tracks window. Click it again if you want to hide it. You can also open that window by going to the view, show audio track. Once an audio track has been added to your project, you can enable or disable that audio track by clicking on this icon. You'll find all the audio export options in file, export, audio. You can export the selection only, create a file for each track, export the metronome, the count in, and you can export your file in MP3, WAV, FLAC, AIFF, and AUG. Audio tracks can be used on existing projects or brand new projects. We're gonna create a new project here and we're gonna add an audio track. I'll first open the audio track window and then I'll simply drag and drop the audio file I wanna use. Before we do anything to the score, we're gonna increase the number of measures found in the project. Now we can do this by simply clicking on the plus icon directly on the waveform. Now, this is not necessary if we're adding an audio track to an existing project. With an existing project, we'll just open the audio track window and drag and drop whatever audio file we want to use. Notice the menu bar on top of the audio track window. This is where we find all the useful tools to manipulate that audio track. Okay, so now that we have our audio track imported in a project, and here I'm using an existing project, we're going to sync that audio track with the original score. Step one is to adjust the padding. In this step, we're basically setting the audio track to start exactly with the score. And for that, we can just move this icon straight to where we wanna start. We can zoom in a little bit to make sure that we're super precise. However, you can move that start point wherever you want on the audio track. Sometimes it might be useful to start it a little bit later if your project is only for a particular section of the song, for example. You can also make further adjustments by moving the waveform itself by holding down Control on Windows, Command on Mac, and just dragging the whole waveform directly on the screen. Now, if you wanna hear what the audio track sounds like at any particular point, you could just move your cursor right here and notice the little speaker icon that shows up. And you could just click on that to hear what it sounds like at the beginning of the bar. All right, speaking of bars, uh, this is step two. We need to place those sync points to adjust synchronization. This ensures that the bars in our project matches what is being heard. So we can manually move these sync points directly on the waveform. These vertical lines on the screen correspond to the beginning of each bar in the project, and the dotted bars correspond to the beats according to the project's time signature. And we can fix one of these sync points by simply double clicking on it. Now it's locked and we can start adding other sync points. We can do so by simply double clicking above the waveform. This is gonna add additional sync points. And of course, the more sync points we add, the more precise the synchronization is gonna be. Now, a few tips to make that sync happen smoothly. Start with a few bars at the very beginning of your project, and then do the same with a few bars at the very end of your project. Once that's done, you can just adjust the middle of the score. Note that the sync points are always gonna take over the tempo of the score. See, as soon as we add sync points, 
the tempo is going to be bypassed and everything is going to be synchronized to the actual audio track. All right, so let me show you how it works. The first step is to adjust the padding right here on the left. And I can just visually make sure that this starts where the WAV file starts. The bars are also going to adjust themselves automatically. Let's take a listen. It's actually pretty good. I'm gonna make this super accurate. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit and I'm gonna make sure that each bar starts exactly on one of these transients. You can see it here, for example. And as I'm doing this, it's going to adjust the other bars. What I like to do is to go towards the end of the project. I'm gonna zoom in and I'm gonna to try to adjust this right here on the transient. And this should fix anything in the middle. Maybe around here, measure 42. I'm gonna play that and we'll see if the tab syncs up. Check that and lower the volume of the backing track. So what we're hearing now is Guitar Pro. Yeah, it's perfectly synced. Let me show you how I do this on a brand new project. Let's say that we want to transcribe a song. So I've got an empty project here. I'm gonna open the audio track. I'm gonna open a song that I wanna tab. We'll do this back in black. My first step is to add a bunch of measures here. So for that, I'm just gonna slide to the end of the project, all the way to the end here. If I click this plus sign, it's automatically gonna populate all the different bars. Now it's not synced yet. I'm gonna to go to the very beginning of the track. All right, so I wanna make sure that the first bar starts with this very first percussive note. So I'm gonna adjust the padding. Now, if I go back to this first bar, it's gonna start exactly with the audio. Okay, so my second bar is right here on this note. So we got one, two, three, four, right here. So I'm gonna drag this right about here. I'm gonna move this a little bit to make sure it starts on the transient. You can kind of see the audio file, the waveform right here. As I'm refining the process, everything else is kind of getting aligned. Now, just like we did before, I will go towards the end of the project and I can still adjust a little bit, making sure that it starts right on the, tra on the transient. All right, this should line up perfectly. Perfect. Now that everything is synced up, I could start tabbing. Yep. And then I'll go measure by measure, just tabbing the whole thing out. Well, let's take a look at some of the tools that are available directly in the audio track window. On the right side, we can adjust the pitch of the actual audio track. I could do that in increments of semitones or cents. Now this is great for times when perhaps you're using an audio track with guitars that are not tuned at 440 hertz. Now there are a few other really useful tools that you can find in the audio track window. You can apply filters to your track. This can help you while you're editing a score if you want to maybe remove the bass frequency of the original audio track so that you can replace it with you actually tab. And GP8 comes with a bunch of different filters you can apply to those audio tracks. It's a very useful feature allowing you to really blend that original audio track with your project. And once you're happy with your audio track enabled score, there are different ways to export that. You can embed the audio track directly into your score, which will create a file that includes not only your GP8 score, but also the audio track directly into the project. Now the file size of that project is gonna be bigger because that also includes the actual audio track, but it makes it very convenient if you wanna share the whole project with someone else. Or you can use the unembedded option. With the unembedded option, the audio track stays separate from the project. And as long as you keep that audio file where it was when you created that project, GP8 will directly make the link with the location of that file 
and whenever you open that saved unembedded project, the other track is going to show up. So yes, it's been a long time coming, but it's finally here. The addition of the audio track in GP8 is a true game changer. It's gonna help you write better scores. It's gonna help you practice. It's gonna help you teach if you wanna add direct commentaries on the track and so many more options that we probably have not thought of yet. Check out guitarpro.com for more tutorials, tips, check out the blog, and of course, check out the brand new GP8. Now let us know what you think of the new audio track feature in the comment section. I'm also gonna leave a link below where you can download a free sample of a GP8 project that includes an audio track. I can't wait to see what you do with the new feature. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.